President Mooney, Provost Sterrett, the Board of Trustees, faculty and staff, friends and families, and to our graduates. Good morning, Raven Nation. I must say that my heart is filled with joy as I look out to you today. This is a joyful and a good space. And as we're gathered here in this space, there are thousands of people connected in all points north, south, east, and west that are celebrating around the world in this joyful moment. Because we all come together to celebrate you because you have demonstrated the endurance, resilience, passion, and drive that has led to this moment. In a year that has been unlike anything that we have known before, you have persisted. So let us celebrate, let us have our hearts filled with joy, for you have made this a happy and joyful day. As we prepare to honor and recognize each of you, let us pray. Spirit of eternal wisdom, love and justice, be with us today. In a year of tremendous odds, that has led to this moment, there have been many sacrifices. Yet let us remember that within our sacrifice, things have been made sacred. We celebrate the bonds and commitment that we have strengthened with one another and for our concern for the well-being of our community. May we forever hold a high standard for all life around us, we pray that no matter what darkness we find ourselves, that it is through community, learning, growing, and a commitment to justice that we are brought into light. Therefore, fill us with your holy wisdom, love, and justice as we move forward in our lives. Help us to be perpetual learners and draw us into that loving community with those known and yet to be known. And finally, be present with us today as we gratefully and most joyously celebrate the graduates of Franklin Pierce University. Amen. I ask that you remain standing for the nation's national anthem sung by Michael Motala, graduate of class of 2021 from Derry, New Hampshire. I just have to adjust the microphone. Hmm. Okay. Hmm. stripes and bright stars through the perilous fight or oh, the ramp 
ramparts we watched were so gallantly streaming and the rockets wrecked there the bombs bursting in air gave proof through the night that our flag was still there oh say does that star spangled banner yet Thank you. Please be seated. I ask that you turn your attentions, uh, attention to the screens for a welcome from Mr. Frederick W. Pierce IV, Chair of the Board of Trustees. Well, on behalf of the Board of Trustees, of Franklin Pierce University. Congratulations to the class of 2021. And also we do have some members of the class of 2020 with us here as well. So a unique year indeed. And it has been, what a crazy year it has been. You will remember this forever. That most certainly will happen. And given the circumstances, do you all know how lucky you are? Do you realize that the super majority of universities in America this year were 100% online? You were not. You were here. You were on campus. And for that, we are thankful and you should be thankful. You had a different senior year than most college students anywhere in America. And you're gonna remember that for a very, very long time. Now, I ask you to look around you. Look around you and remember. Look to your left and to your right, behind you and in front of you, at your classmates, at your friends. And, and mark, mark this comment now. Please, please, please stay in contact with your classmates. Stay in contact with your faculty and stay in contact with your university. For all of those, your friends, your classmates, your faculty, and your university will continue to pay dividends for the rest of your life if you stay in contact. It's been one of the most valuable aspects of my education, staying in contact, and it continues to pay dividends today. So please do that. Keep Franklin Pierce in mind and we'll keep you in mind. We're ever so proud of you here today for what you've persevered and how you persevered and getting to this date of your graduation and doing it in person. Congratulations and all the best for a bright and wonderful future. Have a great day. Good morning. Thank you, Michael, for leading us through the national anthem. Thank you, Michael Matola. To all of our families, friends, alumni, and students joining us via live stream from home, including members of the Board of Trustees and today's honored guests, and Provost Sterrett, academic deans, dedicated Franklin Pierce University faculty and staff, welcome to Franklin Pierce University's 56th commencement. Today is yet another first in the university's 15 month effort to proceed with caution and grace to complete this academic year in a safe and fulfilling way. And of course, welcome and congratulations to the class of 2021, our rain or shine class.
Congratulations on your academic and personal accomplishments throughout your education at Franklin Pierce and on earning your degrees from the doctorate to the associates. For once in your lives, you should be proud to get a zero. That is the current number of COVID cases on campus today. And welcome and congratulations as well to the members of the class of 2020 who have joined us today. We are so happy to have you back. So all of the graduates will take more significant steps at Franklin Pierce this morning because as you walk across this stage, you will join me as a proud alum of this university. And you will join the ranks of the class of 1971 who walked across this stage 50 years ago and who are watching and cheering you on this morning. The class of 71 is very special to us. It has remained actively engaged with one another and with Franklin Pierce. And this is a group that has generously supported many campus projects over the years, most recently the refurbishment of our campus waterfront, which I know we all appreciate and enjoy. And last night's fireworks were spectacular. So we do thank the class of 1971, and we wish they were here with us today because they would have processed with you. So let's uh, acknowledge them now as they're watching from home. Fifty years from now, I hope many of you join the graduating class for that moment. The last time the Franklin Pierce community was able to gather in person for commencement was in May of 2019, two years ago, and we could not imagine the global turmoil which has transpired since then. I have always wanted to quote the Grateful Dead in a speech. And so while this may be the most obvious lyric for the moment, and you could probably sing it with me, it is also the most fitting. What a long, strange trip it's been. Almost all of you graduating today started at Franklin Pierce during what we now refer to as the pre-COVID world. But in the spring of 2020, you quickly discovered that coexisting with a pandemic presents unwelcomed disruptions unexpected complications and unusual detours. This powerful and shared upheaval was also replete with individual and personal challenges. But you prevailed and admirably. I so appreciated the perspectives you shared yesterday at baccalaureate. You are such an impressive class. And as we asked staff and faculty members to reflect on the distinctive traits, the characteristics of the class of 2021, all 556 of you who graduated across this academic year, our doctoral students, our master's students, our online students, our Ringe students, there were clear commonalities among the words they used to describe you. You've heard them before. Adaptable, composed, loyal, grateful, caring, resilient, and I would add undaunted, and today, triumphant. And yes, you needed to demonstrate all of these traits as you completed your educational journeys in ways that you did not anticipate and most assuredly did not wish for. But in true Raven Nation fashion, you sacrificed and you embraced your circumstances. You made the most out of this historic year, and there is no clearer evidence of your tenacity than that you are here today to graduate together as a class from Franklin Pierce University. Some of you graduating today we know have plans for graduate school, and some of you are coming to Franklin Pierce for graduate school, so we're thrilled to know that. And others will be heading out to begin your professional lives and to start your career paths. The pandemic didn't disrupt just your college experiences. It has changed the world of work. For myriad professions, place-based work or that five-day-a-week commute to an office may become employment relics of a pre-COVID environment. Flexibility is on the rise as an employee benefit, and the place you work may be the place you choose. There's no universal playbook 
for how industries are going to reorganize or re-engage with their employees once the pandemic recedes. There are so many implications to these changes, but you are among the first wave of graduates to enter this new world. You now have the opportunity to influence, to shape, to decide what your professional lives, what your futures will entail. Literally and figuratively, the world is open to you. And with all you have learned throughout your time and experiences at Franklin Pierce, inside classrooms, from leadership positions, through athletic competitions, from deep and rewarding lifelong friendships, and even through relationships that have challenged you, you are ready for the possibilities ahead. Our collective hope for you is that you wake up every morning with an opportunity to honor what it means to be a Franklin Pierce graduate. One of your classmates wrote to me earlier this week to respectfully express her frustration about an error made around the academic honors she earned here. She said, there is most likely nothing that can be done. However, one thing that Franklin Pierce did teach me is to make my voice heard. And so that is what I am doing. That message gave me so much hope and confidence because this community that is so proud of all of you is now relying on all of you to leverage your Franklin Pierce education, to use your voices, to ethically, compassionately, and inclusively lead, lead in your chosen professions and in your communities. Leverage your Franklin Pierce education to give your life purpose and ultimately satisfaction for making positive, sustainable differences in the world. As a university community, we celebrate having had the privilege to educate you and indeed learn from you. We thank our faculty, we thank our staff, our coaches, we thank your families and friends joining us today for all they have contributed to your success as well. But most of all, we thank you, the graduates of Franklin Pierce University. Congratulations. I am so pleased to introduce the class of 2021 valedictorian Amalia Traffy. <laughs> Amy has been a residential student in Ringe since 2017. She is graduating from the College of Liberal Arts and Social Sciences with a Bachelor of Arts degree in English Education. Congratulations, Amy. Good morning. Dr. Mooney, Provost Starrett, deans, faculty, staff, honored guests, and class of 2021. I'm honored to be able to offer you a few thoughts on this special occasion. Four years ago, in the stress of my senior year of high school, I chose to move to New Hampshire and come here, to Franklin Pierce. I moved from my small town in South Dakota to this forest we like to call New Hampshire. The sheer number of trees took a little getting used to. I thought then that I had made the biggest decision of my lifetime, or at least in the foreseeable future. What I've realized in these four years is that we will never be done making decisions. I've had to say yes or no to so many opportunities along the way, and there will always be another choice to make. Although those choices may not always be clear or easy, I know that the experiences I have had during my college career have prepared me to take on the future. I am certain that many of you, amid the nervous excitement of stepping out into the world, are feeling the same way. Today, at the end of this era, it's easy to feel anxious about the future or sorrowful about leaving this chapter behind. Instead, let's make the choice to reflect with thankfulness on the past and look with joy and anticipation to the future. We have achieved so much together, and while I don't want to give too much attention to COVID-19 today because I think it has overwhelmed our thoughts enough, I do want to recognize the tremendous hurdles that we have overcome. Remote learning was not easy, and being distant from campus, friends, and clubs was disheartening. But our presence here today proves our desire to learn and embrace life deeply despite it all. 
let's take a moment today to reflect on the journey that has brought us all here and appreciate every obstacle and every success. College is an experience that is as refining as it is revealing, and the choice we all made to attend Franklin Pierce will echo in our lives for years to come. I think we have all found a new part of who we are in our time here. Whether it be a new path for our lives, cherished friendships, or valuable experiences, I think we are all thankful for those pieces of ourselves we have discovered along the way. We emerge from this experience equipped with knowledge, newfound skills, and well-steeped ambition. My hope is that we carry these gifts forward, choosing every day to use them to make the world a kinder, richer, and more understanding place. May we take the gifts of our arts and social sciences professors and communicate a message of love and hope to the world. Go out and add beautiful, impactful words to the global canon. Pursue justice and peace, working to create a more equitable society in a vastly imperfect world. Entertain, educate, and exemplify goodness. Thank you for having the courage to create. May we take the gifts of our health and natural science professors and use them to discover more of this stunningly crafted earth and beyond. Go out and pursue the complexities of humanity, bringing back the wealth of understanding something previously misunderstood. Go out and encourage others to be good stewards of this earth and of our own bodies that we might take care of ourselves and our surroundings. Thank you for having the humility to serve others. May we take the gifts of our business professors and use them to bolster those that have innovative and important ideas to share. Go out and be a force for an economy that is stable, sustainable, and supportive. Thank you for adding so much to this world. May we take the gifts of our administrators and faculty and use their examples of leadership and kindness to guide our way. Let's be grateful for all they have done for us and carry that thankfulness with us into our life's next chapter. Personally, I would like to thank my parents for supporting me every step of the way. They have always encouraged me to work hard and celebrated with me when that hard work paid off. Thank you to my closest friend and only college roommate, Desiree West. You made these four years absolutely unforgettable. I am so glad you joined me on this adventure and I can't wait to see what the future holds for you. Thank you to my husband who cooked me countless meals and sat by my side as I wrote essay after essay. Thank you, Keith, for keeping me caffeinated and calm. <laughs> Whenever I'm stressed, you always know just what to say to make me laugh. Thank you to my in-laws for welcoming me into your family and giving me a home away from home. Also, thank you for letting me use your printer. I think I owe you quite a bit of money in printer paper. <laughs> Lastly, I want to give a special thank you to those in the English department who have made a profound impact on my life and career. Thank you for choosing such an important profession. Dr. Jess Landis, thank you for being my guide through the world of Shakespeare. Through your passion, his work came alive, and my newfound appreciation for good old Willie Shakes will stay with me forever. Your class stands out in my memory as one that has changed the way I see the world. Thank you for being such a fun and encouraging professor. Professor Alan Schulte, thank you for encouraging me to pursue opportunities. Because of you, I stayed in that first creative writing elective and took every other creative writing elective I could from then on. Thank you for telling me to join the Writing Center and guiding me through that experience. You welcomed me to campus on my very first day of classes and have made me feel welcome and appreciated every year since then. Dr. Gerald Burns, Thank you for bestowing upon me so much literary knowledge and heartfelt kindness. I looked forward to your classes every week, excited to learn from such an interested, genuine, and articulate person. Congratulations on a wonderfully successful career. I am certain you have left a mark on many students' lives, and you will be greatly missed in the years to come. We will especially miss your impeccable sense of humor. Dr. Donna Decker, thank you for being exactly who you are. I have never met someone so unapologetically themselves, and through your high expectations and constant encouragement, I believe I have become a better writer than I have ever been. Thank you for exploring the world and literature with such adamant zeal, passing on that passion to anyone who witnesses it. 
I like to think I will be taking some of your fierceness with me when I leave. Dr. Sarah D'Angelo Antonio, thank you for being so much to me and others throughout these years. You have been my professor, advisor, and source of support over and over again. Your guidance has been incredibly valuable, and I feel so grateful to have had you in my corner all this time. Also, thank you for making me fill out a grid in British Lit. It was painful at the time, but worth it in the end. It has been a distinct pleasure to spend my college years at Franklin Pierce among such wise professors and spirited classmates. Thank you for all you have done and will continue to do for years down the road. And may the choices that have brought us this far encourage us to make choices that will take us even further. The practice of universities awarding honorary degrees dates to the Middle Ages as a way to honor an individual with the most prestigious recognition, the academic degree. Academic institutions typically suspend the usual requirements for a degree, usually at the doctoral level, as a way to honor individuals for noble service to their profession or to others. Due to health and safety protocols and COVID restrictions, our honorary degree recipient is joining us virtually from the Commonwealth of the Bahamas, so we will present the award in absentia. By virtue of the authority vested in me by the Board of Trustees of Franklin Pierce University, I do hereby confer upon the Honorable Shannon Eugene Cartwright the degree of Doctor of Laws with all honors, privileges, and responsibilities thereunto pertaining. Would Professor of English, Gerald Burns, please come forward to read the citation. Shannon Eugene Cartwright. Businessman, civic leader, statesman. A member of parliament in the Commonwealth of the Bahamas, the Honorable Shannon Eugene Cartwright is passionate about the well being and future of his unique island nation. Minister Cartwright's mantra is live for something bigger than yourself. His total dedication to improving the social and economic life of his community lives up to that lofty standard. Born in Nassau, the Bahamas, Minister Cartwright was recruited to play basketball for Franklin Pierce University, where, in 2001, he earned a Bachelor of Arts degree in English with a minor in history, and received the prestigious President's Award for Leadership and Contribution. He holds the distinction of being the first person of color to chair the university's judicial board. Also as a student at Franklin Pierce, Minister Cartwright made an impact on the basketball court and was named a New England Collegiate Conference Academic Scholar Athlete. He later served as Franklin Pierce University's assistant men's basketball coach, where his athleticism and competitive, competitive instincts inspired others to achieve their full potential. He continues to hold multiple basketball records at the university. Returning to his homeland after graduation, Minister Cartwright has spent over 20 years um, as an executive with global hospitality pioneers Starwood Hotels, Resorts Worldwide, and Kersner International. He has also served as a Senior Executive for Corporate Development and Marketing at Dan Brad Limited, a leading international franchise holding company in the Commonwealth. Always one to give back to his community, Minister Cartwright is the founder and director of Vision 21, a youth empowerment and community development program. He has served as chair of the membership committee of the Bahamas governing political party, the Free National Movement, and currently serves as one of its national trustees. Shannon is never afraid of a new challenge, said Ricardo DeVoe, president and CEO of the Bahamas Primary School Student of the Year Foundation, and a fellow brother of the Alpha Phi Alpha fraternity. 
His concern for his community has earned him a special place in the hearts of the individuals he serves. A member of the Commonwealth of the Bahamas Parliament in the House of Assembly for the St. Barnabas constituency since 2017, Minister Cartwright currently serves as the executive chairperson of the Bahamas Public Parks and Public Beaches Authority. He is also <coughs> a justice of the peace, covering all 700 islands and keys of the archipelagic nation. A visionary leader, Shannon's abilities are exemplified in the outstanding role he continues to play in the rehabilitation, development, and maintenance of the nation's parks, playgrounds, and beaches, said Sir Cornelius A. Smith, Governor General of the Commonwealth. His impressive service in the inner city has contributed to the overall improvement in the quality of lives of our citizenry. His humility, coupled with his love for people, has positioned him as a true servant of the people. Whereas the Honorable Shannon Eugene Cartwright has demonstrated the energy and vision to be an effective leader through his professional accomplishments as an elected member of the Bahamian Parliament. Whereas his dedication to the empowerment of young people has led to the redevelopment of inner cities and education reform. Whereas his services to his community have promoted the diversification and strengthening of young people, sports, and culture. Franklin Pierce University is proud to confer upon him the degree of Doctor of Laws Honoris Causa. <laughs> Minister Cartwright has <coughs> provided a pre-recorded message for our graduates, so I direct your attention to the, the screens. President Mooney, Board of Trustees, faculty, staff, family, friends, and most importantly, the class of 2021. First, let me give thanks to Almighty God for giving me the breath and the opportunity to be with all of you on this momentous occasion. I bring warm greetings from the Commonwealth of the Bahamas, a country of 700 islands and keys, a place I call home. Let me also say that despite territorial borders of landmass and oceans, that separate nations, there are universal experiences we all share. Love, happiness, joy, and politicians that are notorious for talking too long. So today I will make every attempt to dispel that notion. I am deeply honored and humbled to receive such an acknowledgement of distinction from Franklin Pierce University. I extend my gratitude to the entire Pierce community, which continues to occupy a cherished place in my heart, and whose influence on my life was immediate from when I first traveled down University Drive. I offer my heartfelt congratulations to you, President Mooney, and the Board of Trustees for your continued vision and leadership of our great institution. Today, however, is not about me. It's about you, the illustrious and inspiring class of 2021. To you, the class of 2021, this is indeed a clarifying moment of great pride and self-reflection, a moment to celebrate both your individual and collective academic excellence, your long restless nights, weary days, and yes, personal sacrifices have culminated in this glorious chapter in your lives that will forever be firmly embroidered in the historical fabric of Franklin Pierce University and in the lives of each of us that have come to share in your triumphs and rejoice in your achievements. May I humbly submit to you that success is really a singular effort, while accolades, feelings of accomplishment and attainment have been justly earned and no doubt justified. The love, encouragement, and support of your parents, grandparents, other family, friends, and faculty members should never escape your sincere appreciation and overwhelming gratitude. The circumstances that have confined many of us to a virtual participation today is not a cause for despair, disenchantment, or disillusionment, but rather a cause for admiration, optimism, and hope. In every generation, there are defining moments that challenge the human spirit, revives our social conscience, renews our hope, and fortifies our resolve to persist, 
push through and create the possibilities from what we can be imagined. Your generation has had a predestined rendezvous with destiny. Today did not happen by chance. Your perseverance and fortitude have been forged through crises and the adversity of an historic global pandemic. I say with a resounding sense of admiration that this story isn't being written about you, it is being written by you. For the legacy is not in your trials and tribulations, but in your trial. Your diligence has ushered in this day. Today is your day. You've reached the mountaintop and you should bask in the enormity and gravity of what you have all achieved. You've been blessed with the best parents, the best education, the best opportunities. You must continue to give mankind your best intentions. What is required next is that your tenacity, resilience, and academic prowess must now chart a course in a world that eagerly awaits your admission and desperately needs your gifts, your talents, your intelligence, your innovation, your leadership. Your liberal arts education and more broadly your liberal arts experience have both rooted in all of you an inherent academic curiosity in the study of yourself and the values therein. The ongoing critical thinking cultivated through a liberal arts education will be your most important tool in your most important work in this most important time as a citizen of the world. Make no mistake, in this role, your commitment to societal and global transformation will not always solicit perfect outcomes, but you must be perfect in your attempts to make this world a better place. Your educational success at Franklin Pierce must not be devalued by adopting an insular view by considering your achievements just merely as a notch on the road to further self-development and academic advancement. As essential as they may be, and they are, it must be seen as a part of a selfless down payment on a more noble, more lofty ambition and broader legacy of solidifying your contributions to creating a safer, healthier, more peaceful, more prosperous, and more just world. For as much as your time at Franklin Pierce has prepared you to confront a challenging, complex, and changing world, it has prepared you most profoundly to change our world. You are obligated to make a difference, a difference with a transforming results that are tangible in your town, your city, your state, your province, your country, our world. Courage is the instrument of change and complacency is the tool of the status quo. So you must be courageous and dare not only to ask the questions that serve as a catalyst for real change, but you must spend every waking moment shaping that change you desire. You must be a determined agent of change, an active participant in the movement for a better world. You must not surrender to an urge to conform, but rather summon a sense of duty to transform. Being a bystander will not suffice. You must strive to pioneer new methods and new modes in your respective disciplines. You must endeavor to seek truth, to be on the front line, to fight inequities and injustices wherever they may be. You must help to combat the prevalence of racism, classism, and sexism. You must reject the darkness where fear, hate, and division go to seek refuge and take into its midst the light of love, a stubborn moral compass, goodwill, and a stern application of justice. One skin color, country, or creed ought not to be the condition by which we choose to serve each other. It is our reverence for the human condition that ought to be the impetus for selfless service. Finally, there is an unchallenged truth and weighty expectation that awaits you at the end of University Drive when you leave Franklin Pierce to begin the next chapter of your lives. That truth, like Mount Monadnock as your backdrop today, will loom large over your lives as a reminder and should always occupy your conscience. Here is that truth. History will judge your lives not by what you gained from this world, but rather what you gave to the world, how you enriched the lives of others and gave selflessly for the cause of humanity. In this regard, we are all tied together in that single garment of humanity and in the spirit of the timeless Athenian oath, we must transmit this world not only not less, but greater, better, and more beautiful than it was transmitted to us. 
let that journey begin. Class of 2021 and members of the Pears community, as I leave you in the splendor of a beautiful New England spring, I wish all of you God's grace and guidance over your new endeavors wherever they may lead. Congratulations, class of 2021. May God continue to bless all of you and may he continue to uplift Franklin Pears University. Thank you, Minister Cartwright. The Honorable Walter R. Peterson Citizen Leader Award is named for the former New Hampshire governor who served as the second president of Franklin Pierce. It is given each year in recognition of an individual who demonstrates select characteristics of Walter's personality, including an extraordinary commitment to public service, selfless contributions to higher education, a sense of humor, and high moral character. It is my honor to announce that the 2021 Honorable Walter R. Peterson Citizen Leader Award recipient is the Honorable John T. Broderick, Jr. Chief Justice Broderick is joining us virtually today from his home in North Andover, Massachusetts. Congratulations. Wood Program Director and Associate Professor for the Master of Physician Assistant Studies Program, Priscilla Marsakovater, please come forward to read the citation. John T. Broderick, Jr., Civic Leader, Champion of Justice, Mental Health Advocate, a former New Hampshire Supreme Court Justice, the Honorable John T. Broderick, Jr. has dedicated his life to making justice more accessible and affordable, and has recently been on a personal crusade to promote mental health awareness. Today, Chief Justice Broderick is being recognized with the Governor Walter R. Peterson Citizen Leader Award, named for New Hampshire's distinguished 72nd governor and second president of Franklin Pierce University for two decades. A graduate of the College of the Holy Cross, Chief Justice Broderick also holds his Juris Doctorate from University of Virginia School of Law. He noted that he always wanted to become a trial attorney and he was a su successful one for many years earning his induction as a fellow of the American College of Trial Lawyers and many other accolades. What I admire most about John is his commitment to both law and social justice, said Stephen McAuliffe, a close friend who met him when they were both trial lawyers and found him a trustworthy adversary. He is articulate, persuasive, respectful, and incredibly patient, a man of social and political action, always focused on principle and the public good. Active in politics and government, Chief Justice, Justice Broderick co-chaired two presidential primary campaigns in New Hampshire for Joe Biden in 1988 and Bill Clinton in 1992. He was proud to be appointed by President Clinton to the board of the National Legal Services Corporation, which funds legal aid for low-income Americans, where he served for more than 10 years. Two attributes that John shares with Walter Peterson, one of the most respected and admired people in New Hampshire, are wisdom and kindness, said Ambassador Terry Shoemaker, a longtime friend of both, who co-chaired the New Hampshire primary campaign for Bill Clinton. These are qualities not often found in the same person in such abundance. Chief Justice Broderick was named Dean of the New Hampshire University School of Law, where he founded the Warren B. Rudman Center for Justice, Leadership, and Public Policy after serving for 15 years on the New Hampshire Supreme Court and as Chief Justice for seven of those years. Over the last five years, 
Chief Justice Broderick has done what he calls his most important work, speaking at over 250 middle schools, high schools, colleges, and universities in Northern New England, and advocating for a new and non-judgmental conversation around mental health. As the Senior Director of External Affairs for Dartmouth-Hitchcock Health, he has championed a campaign to educate people about recognizing mental health illnesses and offering help. Chief Justice Broderick's candid and public accounts of his family's experiences is initiating positive cultural changes to the region's perceptions of people with mental health illnesses. Because of his efforts, New Hampshire became the first state in 2016 to kick off for the campaign to change direction. The REACT Awareness Campaign, established by Chief Justice Broderick and now sponsored by Dartmouth-Hitchcock Health, demonstrates his message that, in his words, students have the ability to change the culture and the way mental health is viewed. John has spoken to thousands and thousands of people and inspired and offered, many, offered hope to many, said Ken Norton, Executive Director of National Alliance on Mental Illness, New Hampshire. His efforts have encouraged people to seek help for themselves or family members and have undoubtedly saved lives. Chief Justice Broderick's dedication to justice and the public good make him an ideal recipient of the Honorable Walter R. Peterson Citizen Leader Award, which recognizes extraordinary commitment to public service, selfless contributions to higher education, a sense of humor, and high moral character. Chief Justice Broderick has prepared pre-recorded remarks. Please direct your attention to the screens. It's wonderful to be with all of you this morning. I want to congratulate all of you on this big day. I remember my graduation, and you will too. And I remember my parents were there that day. They help make it possible for me. That may be true for all of you, too. I want to thank President Mooney and the university and the Peterson family for this very great honor. I knew Governor Peterson in his later years, and I always admired him. Before I ever met him, I admired him, but I came to know him. And what struck me about him was his fundamental decency, his intelligence, his good humor, and his concern for other people. He worried about things larger than himself, and I know he had a distinguished history at this university after he left the governor's office. He was the first citizen of our state, and he remained the first citizen of our state for decades after he left office as did his wife, Dorothy. So I'm genuinely honored to receive this award. It means a great deal to me. I'm not sure I'm deserving of it, but I'm accepting it. By the way, I'm a baby boomer, not that you ever could address that. And baby boomers, by the way, believe they're gonna live forever. And so I turned 73 about four months ago. And so I think we all know what that means my life is almost half over. But I'm looking forward to middle age. I'm looking forward to middle age. I wish that were true. But what I'd like to do in the very few minutes I have, and I promise I won't take much of your time, this is your day. I'd like to leave you with a thought that might have some value to all of you in the years to come. I wanted to be a lawyer, not just a lawyer, but a trial lawyer since I was in the seventh grade. I didn't know any lawyers in my childhood and there were no lawyers in my middle-class family, but that's what I wanted to do. I must have watched a television show as a child. I thought courtrooms were very interesting and important places and I wanted to be part of it. And so I focused on that and I became a trial lawyer and I did that, by the way, for 22 years in this state and sometimes beyond, and I loved every day of it. That was my goal, and I thought I had achieved it. 
In 1995, then Governor Merrill offered me an opportunity to serve on our state Supreme Court, nothing I ever aspired to, nothing I ever thought about doing. I was happy being a trial lawyer, but I knew it was a unique opportunity, and so I took it. I did that for 15 years, and I loved my days on the court. It was a great honor to be there and an even greater responsibility. And thanks to Governor Benson, I served for seven years as Chief Justice of that court, and I'm grateful to both of those men. But I left seven years before I needed to, and I must have wanted to do something else. I wasn't sure what. And so when I told people I was leaving, I didn't know where I was going or what I'd be doing, but I was willing to leave it to chance. And I was fortunate. I became dean of the law school at UNH. I was there for five years, proud of my time there, proud of what we did there, and proud of the fact that we established the Rudman Center for Justice, Leadership, and Public Policy while I was dean. Warren Rudman had been a distinguished senator from our state. Governor Peterson had appointed him years earlier as our attorney general. And when I left the law school, I was looking forward to slowing down. I thought I had achieved what I set out to achieve all those years earlier, even though much of it involved jobs I never envisioned. I was 67 years old, but I hadn't found my purpose in life, apparently. I thought I had. That's what I want to talk to you about. My family had endured a mental health journey that I wouldn't wish on anyone, filled with my own mistakes and regrets. It was very public 20 years ago, but we came through it, uh, through the grace of God and the skill of a lot of good people, and we healed as a family. I'm proud of that. When I was 67 years old, I was asked to get involved in a mental health awareness campaign and it seemed an odd place for me to be, but it's become the most important thing in my entire life. I would do it every day if I could. Over the last five years, I've spoken over 560 times in four states and sometimes beyond. I visited 250 middle schools and high schools. I've hugged thousands of kids grades six through 12 who have wet eyes and cracky voices who share their mental health journey after I share ours. And it has made an imprint on my life that's hard to describe. I mention it to you because it has become the most important work I have ever done. At 67 years of age, I found my purpose in life. That may be true for you too. My message to all of you this morning is don't assume that what you wanna do or be or become is your purpose. It may be, it may not be. Jackie Robinson, who was a baseball player who broke the color barrier in Major League Baseball, on his tombstone in Brooklyn, New York, is a quote from Jackie Robinson. And it says, a life is not important except in the impact it has on other lives. That's a purpose. He lived it. So did Walter Peterson, by the way. That's why we're still honoring him, and hopefully we'll be honoring him for decades to come. Find your purpose. Embrace it. It may come tomorrow. It may not come until you're 67. But if you're lucky, it will come. And I'm grateful my purpose finally came. In any event, I want to thank the university and the president, who's been very gracious to me, for this very real honor. I admired Walter Peterson. I will cherish this award. Enjoy the rest of your day. Thank you, Chief Justice Broderick. Before we confer degrees,
I'd like to wish our provost, Dave Sterrett, a happy birthday. <laughs> Thank you. I, I have four more years until I find my purpose in life, it turns out. <laughs> we will now confer the degrees for the class of 2021. Are you ready? <laughs> we will be asking the students for each degree to rise and be recognized when we confer their degrees. Some students are not able to attend here in person, but will be watching the live stream of the ceremony we will assume they are rising when called wherever they may be. Will the candidates for the Doctor of Physical Therapy please rise? President Mooney, it is my privilege to present to you the candidates who have successfully completed curricula offered by Franklin Pierce University and have been recommended by the faculty to be awarded appropriate degrees in recognition of their academic accomplishments. By virtue of the authority vested in me by the Board of Trustees of Franklin Pierce University, I do hereby confer upon you the degree of Doctor of Physical Therapy with all honors, privileges, and responsibilities thereunto pertaining. Congratulations, DPT students. Will the candidates for the Master of Physician Assistant Studies please rise? Will candidates for the Master of Science and stay standing? Will the candidates for the Master of Science and Accounting please rise? Will the candidates for the Master of Science and Nursing please rise? Will the candidates for the dual Master of Science and Nursing, Master of Business Administration please rise? Will the candidates for the Master of Education please rise? And will the candidates for the Master of Business Administration please rise? President Mooney, it is my privilege to present to you the candidates who have successfully completed curricula offered by Franklin Pierce University and have been recommended by the faculty to be awarded appropriate degrees in recognition of their academic accomplishments. By virtue of the authority vested in me by the Board of Trustees of Franklin Pierce University, I do hereby confer upon you master's degrees with all honors, privileges, and responsibilities thereunto pertaining. The names of the graduates will be read by College of Business College Coordinator and Assistant Professor of Accounting, Christine Fetz. Marissa Kennell. Karen Perry. Caitlin O. Benson. Christopher M. Charles. Marilyn Frederick. Catherine M. Hartford.
Antoinette Melo. Emily Ann Tyler. Buba Ashaku Davo. Rebecca Nicole Karkoff. <laughs> Joni Marie Cormier. Sarah Mackenzie Ernst. May Jocelyn <laughs> Madison Michelle Killebrew <laughs> Demetria Marie Kirby Sean Michael Kukaskas. <laughs> Josette Pierre Louis. Jessica Megan Rigo. Samuel James Steves. Cameron Janus Torres. Sarah Elizabeth Waldrop. Yeah. And Ryan Jones Woolley. Will the candidates for the Bachelor of Science degree please rise? <laughs> President Mooney, it is my privilege to present to you the candidates who have successfully completed curricula offered by Franklin Pierce University and have been recommended by the faculty to be awarded appropriate degrees in recognition of their academic accomplishments. By virtue of the authority vested in me by the Board of Trustees of Franklin Pierce University, I do hereby confer upon you the degree of Bachelor of Science with all honors, privileges, and responsibilities thereunto pertaining. The names of the graduates will be read by Professor of Biology and Environmental Science, Jack, Jacques Villur.
Paul Raymond and Koyak II, magna cum laude. Amuna Ariel, magna cum laude. Rudra Ariel, assistant professor of physics, will hand the diploma to his wife, Amuna Ariel. Haley Alana Ailes. <laughs> Uval Barak. <laughs> Christina Arden Joy Adams. Demi Laurel Akins, cum laude. Marcus Gerald Anderson, magna cum laude. Olivia Marie Barnes. Summa cum laude. <laughs> Hannah Elizabeth Barry, cum laude. <laughs> Donovan Bonilla. Brianna J. Burke. <laughs> Caitlin Brianne Brenham. <laughs> Christopher Michael Bro. Zachary Brumeyer. <laughs> Tion L. Brown, Jr., magna cum laude. <laughs> Casey Butera. Nick Byram, cum laude. Marissa Capri Carbone, summa cum laude. Jillian Christine Cardi. Samantha D. Casey, cum laude. <laughs> Matteo Marco Cavalieri, magna cum laude. <laughs> Margaret Julia Childress, summa cum laude. Jenna Lindsay Simbron, magna cum laude. <laughs> A. 
Ezeti Maria Clem. Rebecca Cook, summa cum laude. Julia Jordan Crane, summa cum laude. Brittany Cusson. Hannah Kuzner, cum laude. Erin Patricia Daly, magna cum laude. Maria Catriona Di Piero. Karina Elizabeth Dillon, summa cum laude. Cole Dorman. Joshua Emerson Dorr, magna cum laude. Carolyn Therese Drown, cum laude. Ryan Ducro, magna cum laude. Alexandra Marie Duddy, summa cum laude. Kiera Christina Duggan, summa cum laude. Isaiah Evans. Hannah Rose Everidge, summa cum laude. Marissa Giovanna Farago, magna cum laude. Yannick Felber, summa cum laude. Angelo Stephen Femino. Kristen Femino, accounts payable and cash receipt specialist, will hand the diploma to her son, Angelo Femino. <laughs> Riley Wayne Fenoff, summa cum laude. Carlos Ferrando Feliz. <laughs> Lindsay K. Finney, summa cum laude. Marco Lopez Forner. Kyle Ross Fortier, cum laude. <laughs> Emily Marie Frady. <laughs> Alice Catherine Friel, magna cum laude.
Kayla Renee Frith, cum laude. Kobe D. Givens. Kayla Gonzalez Hyen. <laughs> Hannah Ray Goldrup, summa cum laude. <laughs> Courtney T. Grafstein, cum laude. Allison Green, magna cum laude. <laughs> Lindsay Nicole Greer, summa cum laude. <laughs> Jessica Grimmer. Alyssa Kennedy Harris, cum laude. Sarah Ann Hendricks, summa cum laude. Malina Renee Herrick. Kimberly Josie Hilaire. Gina Marie Hinckley, magna cum laude. Bailey Ann Hoyt, magna cum laude. Dakota William Iker. <laughs> Elena Borislavova Ivanova, magna cum laude. Emily Rose James, summa cum laude. Molly Lynn Jones, summa cum laude. Eric Thomas Joyce, cum laude. Cheyenne Coble, magna cum laude. Emily Michelle Kramer, magna cum laude. Samantha D. Legal, magna cum laude. Allison Elizabeth Lasua, cum laude. Matthew P. Ladon, magna cum laude. Annabelle J. Lee, magna cum laude. Clifton O. Lego, cum laude.
Alejandro Esteban Lopez Wheeler. Caroline Rachel Lounsbury, magna cum laude. Jared Lubas, cum laude. Brittany Luther. Coleman M. Lydon. Nick Martino. Jacob Massey. Brandon P. McLaughlin, cum laude. Reese Gregory McMahon. Jonathan E. Meady. Kayla Rose Mealy, cum laude. Taylor M. McNone, summa cum laude. Mackenzie Minkler. Jesse Nicholas, magna cum laude. Aaron Catherine O'Brien. William O'Donoghue. Brian Ross Paradis, magna cum laude. <laughs> Haley Michelle Parker. <laughs> and Kruma Patrick, magna cum laude. Thomas Dennis Henry Pitts, summa cum laude. Dylan Pierce Pliss. Aya Michelle Poirier. Gavin Dakota Power. <laughs> Douglas Francis Quinn, magna cum laude. <laughs> Daniel A. Reynolds. Evan Richard, magna cum laude. <laughs> Sashaley Rivera, summa cum laude. <laughs> no. 
Bradley E. Rochford, magna cum laude. Eva Line, Jessica Bump Rodriguez, cum laude. <laughs> Ashley Marie Rosario, magna cum laude. <laughs> Rebecca June Roy. Antonio George Rua, summa cum laude. <laughs> Molly Isabel Ruan. <laughs> Valerie K. Seval, cum laude. Zachary A. Sell, cum laude. Jordan Victoria Spires. Paul Casimir Schultz, cum laude. Cody Talent, cum laude. Nicole Taylor Tebow, magna cum laude. Zoe Steele Totland, cum laude. Salif Tunkara. Marissa Trudeau, magna cum laude. Claudia Marie Tucci. Sam Cornelis Siba Van Ostrom, cum laude. Seku Vallard. Yeah. Chloe Vieira, magna cum laude. Delaney Rose Waite, summa cum laude. Ian Richard Wallace, magna cum laude. John James Wallace, cum laude. Megan Elizabeth Waller, magna cum laude. Whitney Cheyenne Washington. Hunter Leroy Weissman.
Victoria M. Wellenstein. Katrina Jean Wilson, magna cum laude. Jeremy Anthony Wood, magna cum laude. Catherine Worth. Andre J. Wright, cum laude. <laughs> Samantha Judith Yeaw. Aloyo Lydia Yen, magna cum laude. Serena M. Zemitis, summa cum laude. Will the candidates for the Bachelor of Arts degree please rise? President Mooney, it is my privilege to present to you the candidates who have successfully completed curricula offered by Franklin Pierce University and have been recommended by the faculty to be awarded appropriate degrees in recognition of their academic accomplishments. By virtue of the authority vested in me by the Board of Trustees of Franklin Pierce University, I do hereby confer upon you the degree of Bachelor of Arts with all honors, privileges, and responsibilities thereunto pertaining. The names of the graduates will be read by Professor of English, Donna Decker. Amelia Leola Trappi, summa cum laude. Brendan Aldridge. Michael Edward Alibrandi, cum laude. Sean Anzalone. <laughs> Hugo Arlaba, summa cum laude. Grace Arneson. <laughs> Megan Ann Barber Grissom. <laughs> Jillian Beyond, magna cum laude.
Phoenix S. Blodgett, cum laude. Peter Joseph Forzellino, cum laude. <laughs> Sophia Brown. Megan Rose Bulow, magna cum laude. <laughs> Brittany Elizabeth Campbell. <laughs> Jennifer Jean Capistran. Brian Thomas Carey. Erin Marie Chilicki. Julia Chilinski. Sarah Elizabeth Sink Mars, magna cum laude. Marcos Colon, cum laude. Haley Connolly. <laughs> James F. Conway the third. <laughs> Betsy Rose Coplin. Journey Schuyler Dunn. <laughs> Casey P. Eldred, magna cum laude. <laughs> Lindsay Rebecca Erlinson. Tyler A. Faulkner. <laughs> Griffin Fredette. <laughs> Patrick Gagliardi. John C. Gerke, summa cum laude. Christopher Joseph Gibbons.
Tiffany Shantae Graham. Patrick S. Hannon. Vaughn Hayden. Julie Christine Hinckley, summa cum laude. Jackson Jr. Benjamin James Magna Cum Laude. Brianna Johnfin. Sarah Rose Joyce, cum laude. Nicole Kelly. Averill Kennedy. Elizabeth Teresa Kleiner, magna cum laude. <laughs> Kyle Klimowitz, magna cum laude. Awesome. Good job. <laughs> Michael Levitt, cum laude. Alyssa R. Lewis, summa cum laude. Justin M. Lorenzo. Catherine Elizabeth Mansfield. Sonia Ann Martell. Congrats. Dina Martucci. Marissa Leah Massaro, summa cum laude. Alina Masterson, summa cum laude. <laughs> Bailey Louise Madison, magna cum laude. Ryan M. McCombs, cum laude. <laughs> Shannon Elizabeth McKeever, magna cum laude.
Ian W. Maluski, magna cum laude. Mary Messina. Michael Pasquale Motola, magna cum laude. <laughs> Kylie G. Matica. Emily Catherine Morgis. <laughs> Caitlin Jean Munzing. <laughs> oh, cum laude. <laughs> Brendan Joseph Neal. Ethan Joshua Newman, cum laude. <laughs> Luke William Newman, cum laude. <laughs> Kelsey O'Brien Simino. Margaret O'Connell, cum laude. Jacqueline Marie O'Toole. Brittany C. Willette, cum laude. Amanda Lee Pale, cum laude. <laughs> Kayla Palmer, magna cum laude. <laughs> Jessica Lynn Patalano, magna cum laude. Owen Dakota Piasecki. <laughs> William Richard Quinn, magna cum laude. <laughs> Jennifer Reem, cum laude. Jessica Reem, cum laude. Liam E. Robinson. Nicole Gerald Saw, cum laude. Hannah Louise Schwack Trovich, magna cum laude. <laughs> so 
Logan S. Stanley, cum laude. Michaela Ann Stubbs. Cameron Supple. Yeah. Taylor Tribley, cum laude. Angelina Vacari. Charles Vacassian, cum laude. Hunter R. Venteri, cum laude. Gregory A. Wadsworth, summa cum laude. Alexander P. Wentworth, magna cum laude. Desiree West, summa cum laude. <laughs> Thomas J. Wood. Will the candidates for the Associate of Arts, the Associate, Associate of Arts degree please rise? President Mooney, it is my privilege to present to you the candidates who have successfully completed curricula offered by Franklin Pierce University and have been recommended by the faculty to be awarded appropriate degrees in recognition of their academic accomplishments. By virtue of the authority vested in me by the Board of Trustees of Franklin Pierce University, I do hereby confer upon you the degree of Associate of Arts with all honors, privileges, and responsibilities thereunto pertaining. And now, not to be forgotten, we will now recognize the members of the class of 2020 who chose to return to who, who chose to have who chose to return I haven't had anything to drink yet I apologize <laughs> who chose to return to have their degrees conferred in person and he means coffee <laughs> yeah. will the class of 2020 candidates for the master of science and nursing please rise will the class of 2020 candidates for the master of education please rise Will the class of 2020 candidates for the Master of Business Administration please rise? Will the class of 2020 candidates for the Bachelor of Science degree please rise? Will the class of 2020 candidates for the Bachelor of Arts degree please rise? The master students' names will be recognized first in line. By virtue of the authority vested in me 
By the Board of Trustees of Franklin Pierce University, I do hereby confer upon you the degrees of Masters and Bachelors with all honors, privileges, and responsibilities thereunto pertaining. Congratulations, Class of 2020. Matthew Katie. <laughs> Ashley Gonyer. <laughs> Ted J. Lambert, magna cum laude. Shannon Nowicki, summa cum laude. Ayodela Chike. Oyuhuro. Felicia Wallalis, magna cum laude. Dante Camacho, cum laude. Shane Duquette, magna cum laude. Marquita Johnson. <laughs> Elizabeth Jurgelwitz, summa cum laude. Julius Peel, cum laude. Beth Stewart. Magna cum laude. <laughs> Kylie May Jocelyn, magna cum laude. Torres, magna cum laude. Well done. With great pride as your president and your fellow alum, 
It is now my distinct honor to officially welcome all of you, class of 2021 and again the class of 2020, into the Franklin Pierce University Alumni Association. Congratulations. There are over 27,000 graduates of Franklin Pierce and they also enthusiastically welcome you as individuals and as graduating classes into this vibrant alumni network. We are forever connected to one another and to Franklin Pierce, this incredibly special university, our alma mater. We will always want to know how you are and where you are and we will always welcome you back. So I have a few favors to ask of our graduates. The first is to please rise and to move your mortar board tassels from the right side to the left. And now, please join voices to sing the alma mater we are going to be led first through one round uh, by Abigail Purchase from the class of 2022. All right, thank you, Abby. And after Abby sings once through, we are going to ask all of you to join in the second round. Uh, this is, the lyrics are on page 19 in your programs if you don't know them. But here's my special request. Please let your family and friends at home hear you. So let, let's sing the alma mater. Franklin Pierce, Franklin Pierce, we remember well. Small and grand, you will stand, we remember well. Friends, we know. Graduates, I have one more request for you. Please look behind you at the camera and give a big shout out wave, blow kisses to your family and friends, our board of trustees, our alumni, everyone cheering you on this morning. We, fish, we officially present the Franklin Pierce University classes of 2021 and 2020. What a wonderful ceremony. We thank you all for joining us. Ravens, take flight. Ex ombris ad lucem. Thank you.
Yeah, there's no, oh. I'm just saying, I'm just, I'm, 